Welcome everyone. My name is Michelle Bodich and I am the CEO of the Australian Admin Awards and I'm joining you today from Sydney, Australia. Just to give you a bit of a brief for those that I haven't met, um, the Australian Admin Awards is the first ever business awards a kind in, in Australia. After seeing years and years of admin professionals go above and beyond and making a difference to leaders, teams and organisations, they often without receiving any recognition they deserved, we decided it was time for change here in Australia. So the triple A's as we call them here at the Australian Admin Awards, recognise and celebrate the achievements, dedication and importance of all administrative professionals across our country here in Australia, inclusive of receptionists, office managers, admin assistants, personal assistants, executive assistants, and whatever your title with those 160 different job titles we have in our profession. The AAA is proud to be the founding body that formally recognise administrative functions with all industries in Australia. Within the AAAs, we have four pillars apart from the awards platforms. We focus on research, advocacy and education. Through our research, the team are currently looking into the role of the receptionist in 2022 and beyond. The role description, the skills needed for the position and the tasks performed in this role um, and what has changed in the last two years. In Australia in 2020, the receptionist roles were the first positions to be made redundant or letting go during the pandemic. And as we saw working from home become the norm and much of our country was in lockdown, plus businesses needed to recoup money from their bottom line. So that function was the easiest and the first to let go, unfortunately. Two years on and our country is attempting to return to the office and navigate the hybrid working model. So. My question for today, and this is our conversation that we will engage in, where does the receptionist role now sit in the administrative profession here in Australia? Today, I am joined in discussion to share some further insights and her expertise by Rachel Quinn, who is the Executive Assistant to the CEO at Healthy Land and Water in Brisbane, which is north of the border here in Sydney. Rachel is a st strategic results um, career C-suite executive assistants with 25 plus years experience. So she's joining me with lots of knowledge and insights. She's a dedicated professional who thrives on meeting the needs of her executive and bringing value to the organisation. She's an active member in our Australian administrative community. She's a fantastic connector, thought leader, both reliable and trusted among, amongst her internal and external stakeholders. She works for a business called Healthy Land and Water, which is a non-for-profit business based in Queensland. Rachel, thanks for joining me. And I'm excited to hear your expertise. And look, I think um, I just wondered if you could share your insights on the profession and how it's changed because, you know, we've been around a while and the profession has certainly changed and there has been a huge leap in the last two years as well. So thanks for joining me. And yeah, I'd love to hear some thoughts from you. Thanks, Michelle. It's great to be part of this discussion. And we have been a lot around for a very long time in the administration profession world. Um, the administration professionals worldwide has play, have played an essential role in the workforce. It dates back to earlier than the 1800s. Mm. And during that time, the profession has been anything but unchanging. Um, I'll share with you a few stats just from the administration timeline. Yep. Um, looking back to the 1800s, the majority of all clerical workers were male. We oh. saw the first typewriter invented, which completely changed the face of the earth. So Isaac Pittman in the 1800s founded a school where students could study shorthand. Mm -hmm. And in 1875, the QWERTY to keyboard was introduced. So that already in the 1800s, you've seen some, ma some major shifts in the administration space. Moving through to the early 1900s, there was a decline in men entering the profession and an increase in women becoming um, basically set in that profession. And we, we still continue to be that high percentage in that, in that um, administration profession. The first photocopiers was introduced and paper clips of all things were invented. Oh my gosh. <laughs> in the mid 1900s, email arrived. 1977, Steve Jobs and Stephen Wozniak introduced the Apple One, which has literally launched the PC revolution. Um, 81, we saw mobile phones introduced in Australia. And 83 and 85, we had Microsoft Word and we had PowerPoint, PowerPoint released. Wow. Um, and then heading into the, into the naughty, naughty, the zeros, um, the internet's developed, virtual assistants and hybrid working become commonplace and Trello, Teams, Zoom and Slack all become part of our everyday language. 
Mm. Um, along with these massive changes in this space, we also welcomed an absolute explosion of organisational tools. So we've got note taking apps, we've got communication platforms, we've got calendaring solutions. We've literally gone from typing pools to hybrid working, and then again from switchboards to Zoom meetings. So administration professionals have literally redefined their roles and their responsibilities multiple, multiple times throughout yeah. our history. Um, and personally, I believe that the administration profession is one of the roles of the 21st century that has actually evolved the most. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because it's the, not just the role that we play and how that's become more strategic than transactional, mm -hmm. but it's the environment in which we work. Um, that yeah. administration space now, 2022, it's fast moving. It's a great space. Um, there's some incredible people filling those roles. And yeah. we've come so far in the history so, you know, to date, but I still think that the distance that we've travelled is not even half of the distance that we've, we've got to travel yet. Mm -hmm. So going forward for administration professionals, the world is our oyster, the space is enormous, and we can just keep growing and filling that space and providing that really high level strategic service across the organisation. Yeah, and I think um, it's incredible how far we've grown. But an interesting thing also before we get into the discussion of what we observed initially in the research data is that the piece of technology. And I remember back, you know, in March 2020 speaking to you when you were, you know, um, going into lockdown just after Sydney here and how technology has changed the roles. And, and I think now it plays, it is just a basic tool that we have in our business or in our tech toolkit, as I call it every day. And it's it's just going to continue to evolve. So if you're still not up to date with your technology in your toolkit, then you've got to get up to speed because we, we're running at a quicker pace. Um, mm. And I think also remember the people that were fearing it back in 2020 and oh, now. Absolutely. We just, it's not going to go away. We're no. not going to stop changing. We're not going to stop evolving. So we need to embrace the new technology. And as you say, add it to our toolkit. It makes yep. us perform better in our jobs yep. and just run with it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, we, Rach, we started the research paper about three and a half weeks ago and we've got three weeks still to go. Um, and really uh, how this came about was, um, one, because I was frustrated in 2020 and then again in 2021 when businesses were cutting the bottom lines and it was a receptionist role. And now mm -hmm. we've gone back to working and now this receptionist role, we have an abundance of jobs. Um, just yeah. to give, you, give the audience a quick um, understanding, in the last week in April across Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane, which is three capital cities here in Australia, we had 512 receptionist jobs advertised in one week. So we've got a huge staff, staff shortage and it's where have these people gone from where they were back in 19 versus 2022. So mm -hmm. just um, a couple observations um, initially from our research data and for those that are listening in um, I will shoot a link in at the end of the session and share with you um, and if you are based in Australia this research paper is for Australia only at this point so if you are in a receptionist role at um, office manager or admin role we'd love to hear from you about what's happening in your business so I've been traveling around Australia as you know we're back traveling and I've been going to a lot of corporate offices um, and it's really funny because more than 90% of 95% of businesses no matter the size when you first walk into their reception area with a large small get out of the lift or with its entry point from the road there's a piece of technology sitting there it's an iPad on a desk or a stand so I go wow that was not in the workplace two years ago it's huge. Yeah. So the, the role of the, the and the role of the iPad is really important because it's a check in system. So um, here in Australia, for those that are listening overseas, we no longer have um, COVID um, check in tools that we used to have in the last two years. So really what they've done is the iPad has remained in place. And what it's doing is, is that I arrive to reception and enter my details. Um, some systems do ask for a photograph as well um, when I check in to make sure that I'm legal and that I look right. But I think it's also they're doing that for health and safety as well. That was identified for that. Um, but what is also happening is, is that I don't speak to a human being until I've actually checked in. And then what happens is, is this iPad is going to two different places. It's going to the person that I'm coming to see because they've already checked me, like they've already let them know that I'm coming. So Rachel's sitting out the back and it says, Michelle's arrived at reception, blah, 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 blah. And then what also happens is, is that then the receptionist, whether she's sitting behind the iPad or around the corner or somewhere else, she pops out and says, good morning, Michelle, how are you? 
So, and she knows what I look like because what happens is the iPad is also now connecting to social media platforms like LinkedIn. So if you've got a LinkedIn profile, you can connect the two. So you can't turn up and pretend to be someone that you're not, first of all. But isn't that just um, hilarious? Because, you know, when we went to reception, how many times have you been at the reception desk in the past and the ladies on the telephone? And I'll get to the telephone calls in a minute. And now we're getting greeted by an iPad, by a piece of technology, and then this person pops up with a big smile and she's saying, hi, Rachel, how are you? And she's actually having a, she's having a more detailed conversation. So I found that quite interesting. Um, have you found in Queensland that the iPad's just everywhere now? Yeah, definitely. I mean, as you touched on before, I work for a not-for-profit not for profit organisation. We yep. tend to do things a little slower than, than in the big corporate world. Yep. However, yep. more than definitely, we've got an iPad in our reception at work. Mm -hmm. And I think what that's brought to the office, it, it's to the reception area, it's brought that streamlined process. Mm. It's not removing that, that touch point with the, with the human, with a person that can do that welcome, but it's adding the value. Yes. You're connecting, like you said, you're connecting to LinkedIn. You can colour code the, your clients so you know who they're seeing, if they're CEO level, if they're a manager level or if mm. they're coming in for an interview. It's, all the information's all there and mm. it's information that you can keep on file. Mm. So as soon as you've had a client that's come in, you've got their mobile number, you've got their position, you've got their email address, you've got their LinkedIn profile and that's really valuable data. You, you're connecting all the pieces yeah. and it's, it's a massive value add. Yeah, it's a massive value. Yeah. Add. I think the other thing now is is that you know these people in these roles, and I'll get to job titles next. They know the foot traffic of what's coming in. Mm. They know the peak periods. They know when they need extra help or when they can do other um, uh, tasks within the the reception area, say cleaning or setting up AV or doing catering, because they know it's not, uh, it's not a peak time. Which is, you know, where do we have this? We used to just put it down on a piece of paper, or we were never asked to know. Hey, what's your foot traffic and what is your high peak period? Like, yeah. the receptionist ever know that? No, they don't. But now they've got that data there through that piece of technology. So they do. Sorry. The other thing that I was just going to say with that, given the role of the receptionist is now becoming much more than a junior role, it's more they're seen more as a strategic player, a strategic position, you'll have a receptionist that's really switched on, that knows person A is coming in, who's actually coming in to see person B, but they've already had a relationship with person C. They yeah. can actually connect. Yes. And they can talk to people behind reception in the office, in the organisation, say, hey, did you know that Jim's coming in today? He's coming in to see whoever. You might want to touch base with him. Yeah. And it's yeah. just that that oversight, that vision. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. That's where that receptionist role becoming such a strategic role is just critical now. And I think in the old days, like if we look at the Global Skills Matrix, for, for example, it was an entry point role and it was just mm. a reactive role. Whereas now when we add this piece of technology, we're not being reactive. We're actually got to think and we've got to be more proactive. Yeah. And I think that comes to the next thing is, is that our initial data that's come back is the name of the receptionist change. From mm. workplace ambassador has popped up, front of house manager, which we saw, and we have one of our winners at the um, recent awards, and mm. then also guest experience. So if I look at those three titles and I add receptionist, it is just a huge shift. And what those four roles now encompass mm. is all about communication, which is a key, and it's all about the experience that you're providing because really they are the first person that you touch, that you feel, that you see. So yeah. when they're opening their mouth and the way that they're looking and appearing, it's about that whole experience that you're creating for the business. So this mm. is an interesting one. Again, we've got more job titles popping up, just not the receptionist anymore. So, yeah. and I think this is the other thing is, is that one in three, one in three that we've um, surveyed so, long, uh, so far, they're not receiving incoming external calls. So, you know, they're freeing up their time, but where are the calls going? So this is the other thing we're mm -hmm. trying to navigate a piece. Look, um, I think also, um, you know, the other thing that we've seen initially, Rach, which is quite interesting, is the new tasks that they're expected to do. Um, mm -hmm. And a key task is the management of all the meeting rooms. Um, yeah. I know for some of the EAs listening in today, they go, oh, that'd be great because, you know, how many times have we got to go in, we've got to prep the meeting rooms and then we've got to clean it up after everyone's left. They're doing mm -hmm. that now. And the other piece which is interesting is that they are expected to have another degree of technology understanding when it comes to the AV. So if the AV isn't working, it is now not the meeting person's responsibility or the um, EA's responsibility. It is now the um, receptionist's responsibility. So she's got to know Microsoft Teams, she's got to know Word, she's got to know all those kind of things. Um, 
to be able to understand them. So it's really another training in a notch. And if we look at the entry point role previously of a receptionist or someone at that level, we didn't expect them to know that. So now we're asking them to step up again, um, which I don't know. What do you feel about that? <laughs> um, 100% agree with you that, yes, the expectation is that we're asking the receptionist to actually step up. Um, we're empowering that role to make decisions. We're empowering that role to become thought leaders and decision makers, mm -hmm. and we're letting them run with that. So because we're allowing them to do that, they're making decisions with regards to this person needs a meeting room, I'm going to book it, I'm going to be responsible for that booking, and I'm going to make sure the room is prepped for them. Yep. I know because they've, they've put the meeting and the invitation, how many people are coming, Yep. I know they need catering. I'm going to make sure the AV's there. I know they've got people dialing into the meeting. Yep. And receptionists are owning that. Mm. So that takes an enormous amount of pressure off the EAs and the other administration professionals that will try to do that as well as manage their executives and their CEOs. Mm. And receptionists, that role has just lifted in that space. Mm. Previously, historically, that role, they've been so underutilised. Yep. And the receptionists of today, they are moving into that, that leadership, that more of that leadership role, that ownership. Mm. And they have been empowered to make these decisions and they're making a difference. Mm. So I suppose the, 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 the couple of concerns that I have initially have, and I don't mm. obviously have enough data, is, is that it is in Australia, like we enter the receptionist role, whether we've just come out of school or just come out of university or we're having that career change. And it's kind of sometimes it's often the, the, the plug hole of our career. We go and we just sit in it and we do it. And as we said, we're doing react, being reactive again. So now if we're not seeing it as the entry point role, my mm -hmm. question or concern until I have more data is, is that, you know, are we going to attract the right talent? because it still is at the entry point, but then are we also going to be able to give them the next career path, which I think we are, because mm. now it makes it even clearer that, you know, we're now lifting the game and lifting the fence post. And what we've seen from a career path perspective is, you know, since the initial change of the iPad coming in and that function that the iPad brings is we're now either seeing people gravitate to the next step after one or two years in the role to a team assistant role, but... Mm. We're also seeing them go to a facilities role, so a facilities manager, which for yeah. me, facilities manager doesn't sit in the admin remit. So does that mean we lose them now out of the admin profession or does that mean that facilities management might at some point come in to be a little yeah. bit of an admin function? I don't know. Because when you think about managing the meeting space and managing the EV, AV in the larger organisation, that sits in a facility management role. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit... I have some concerns, but obviously I don't still have enough data, but it's an interesting one to watch that space. Oh, it is. And I think once you get the data, I'll be really keen to see that data because I think the gap that we've got at the moment, we've also always got a little bit of disjointing there with regards to the salary scale yes. that the receptionist is on compared to the new role that receptionists are actually starting to fill. And don't get me wrong, receptionists are just open, open arms, embracing all of these extra roles and duties and having these responsibilities. So the need is there, they're delivering, they're meeting the demands of the organisation. But mm. at, some stage, at some stage, receptionists are going to go, hang on a minute, mm. I'm not being paid for the value that I bring to the organisation. Mm. And that's where we're going to have a problem. Yeah. And I think... Yeah. You know, an interesting thing as well, what we've observed as well, is that some of these receptionists, when they're not being called a receptionist and they're being called like a guest experience or workplace ambassador, they're not actually sitting under the clerks award here in Australia. They're actually sitting under the hospitality award. Mm -hmm. So traditionally, I mean, uh, hospitality award rates seem to be a little bit lower, but when you look at what they're being paid, they've been paid a level um, four, five and six. So it's somewhere, it, it actually is comparable to what a receptionist wage. But if we're not putting them under the clerks a wage, uh, award wage, then does that mean they still stay in the admin profession? And this is this, you know, horse before the cart or the two-prong approach. Exactly. How, how do we retain them? So it's interesting, the data that we've received so far, but I also think it's really relevant as to where the space has changed with what has happened in the last two years. Mm. Um, and if we just, we've just touched on the receptionist, we're just collecting the data and research for it. So, you know, what happens when I go and study the EA role next? How has that changed? And we obviously know, you know, from the outset, but it's actually understanding the needs of what the businesses now need um, here in mm -hmm. Australia. And, you know, we have certainly here in Sydney and Brisbane, as you know, you know, we're back in the workplace. Are we back in the workplace full time? Mm, 
yes but no um and then how does that role look going forward so yeah. it's an interesting one Rach isn't it it is and it's going to continue to develop um if, if we're nowhere near it being finished being finalized mm. and I think one of the really positive things is that, is that and it might have been joined might have come about because of COVID it, when everybody had to stop working in the cities they had to go home work from their home office everybody stood up because everybody had to learn new skills their roles changed and we've, we've got receptionists, we've got administration professionals, EAs, chief of staffs, they've all come back into the organisations. Um, we're hybrid organisation now, which is fantastic. But we've come back in at a much more strategic level mm. because we've really shown the value that we can bring, yep. even when our bottoms are not in that seat in the office. Mm. We do not have to be in our chairs to bring value to the organisation. And that connects back to the role of receptionist. You do not need a reception front facing in an organisation for that person to get value. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Allow these people to grow outside of their roles and they will just keep delivering. Yeah. And this yeah. again is another great example is that your skills pay the bills and your title yeah. can be anything that you want it to be as long as you understand Absolutely. what your skills are, the tasks you're performing, and then you can be the best administrator possible. So Absolutely. It's exciting. It is. Well, Rach, thanks for the chat today. And, you know, you. encourage those that are listening in, if you um, do want to um, partake in the survey, we'd really love to hear from you. Love your feedback. Open the discussion. Um, and it is so great to see that, you know, our roles are evolving. Um, we are being valued. We are being recognised. Um, and I think another important thing here in Australia is our education journey is only just beginning. And I think mm. someone at this entry point from a receptionist to a guest place, um, sorry, guest experience to workplace ambassador to front of house manager for long times you know we can be educated and we can be trained and I think that is the next part of this research journey and also this advocacy piece so thanks for joining us everyone have an amazing day stay connected and be the best admin professional that you can be